We're standing in the back garden of Four of Oka Terrace. This was a lawn and it was divided from the rest of the vegetable garden with a long trellis which went right across the garden. And this is the first time that I remember meeting Brian. It was 1932 when I was four years of age and I was playing here and I had a hatchet. Maureen Potter might say, I had a hatchet in my hand. And he must have seen me from the window of the house and probably thought I would do myself an injury. So he came out, and this is the first time I remember seeing him. And he said, of course, the language of our house is Irish, he said, Georgia, give it to me. And I did exactly as he said. I just threw it to him. It hit him in the most delicate part of his anatomy. Oh, no, no, not there, but on his ankle. And he hopped around and he used words which I had never heard before. And that was my first time that I can remember meeting him. And some months later, I was taken out of the nursery of the house and I brought up to this room on top of the house and I shared the bedroom with him. And then this huge trellis, which was 12 foot high, it went right across the garden, occasionally would get knocked down with storms during the winter. And he made a table out of parts of this trellis. And on that table, in this bedroom I shared with him, he wrote, at swim two birds. And whether the molecules of the table got mixed up with this writing, the name of the main character in the book is called Dermot Trellis. So there it comes from the trellis. Further extract, descriptive of Dermot Trellis, rated occupier of the Red Swan Hotel, Orazio Recta. Dermot Trellis was a man of average stature, but his person was flabby and unattractive, partly a result of his having remained in bed for a period of 20 years. He was voluntarily bedridden and suffered from no organic or other illness. He occasionally rose for very brief periods in the evening to pad about the empty house in his felt slippers or to interview the slavey in the kitchen on the subject of his food or bedclothes. He had lost all physical reaction to bad or good weather and was accustomed to trace the seasonal changes of the year by inactivity or virulence of his pimples. His legs were puffed and affected with a prickly heat a result of wearing his woolen undertrunks in bed. He never went out and rarely approached the windows. At this stage, when I was about six or so, I was knocking around with friends of mine, and one of them said, my daddy does this, and the other fellow said, my daddy does that. And they said to me, what does your daddy do? And I said to them, I don't know. And they said, well, ask him. So the next day, when I came home out in the garden, I asked him, I said, well, well, what do you do for a crust, if you like? And he said, to if he got him in some cash lot, I have an office in the castle. And yeah, I said, well, I mean, what do you do, I said. And then he said, we're not a mission of frag work as a cur dina breezel. Sometimes I'm responsible for putting people in jail. So then I knew what he did. So the next day, I went out to see my friends. And they said, did you find out what your daddy does? I said, I did. What's he do? He's a judge, says I. And it's only when he died a few years later, I realized he was a revenue commissioner. One of the people we hate, love to hate, because nobody likes to pay their tax. I can't remember anything other than, than uh, out here, but I mean, perhaps I, I'd like to show you the room in which he wrote a swim to words. Well, of course, that, that door was wooden door, the door that went in to the side of the house. Having placed in my mouth sufficient bread for three minutes chewing, I withdrew my powers of sensual perception and retired into the privacy of my mind my eyes and face assuming a vacant and preoccupied expression. I reflected on the subject of my spare time literary activities. One beginning and one ending for a book was a thing I did not agree with. A good book may have three openings entirely dissimilar and interrelated only in the prescience of the author, or for that matter, 
100 times as many endings. Examples of three separate openings, the first. The Puka McFellamy, a member of the devil class, sat in his hut in the middle of a fir wood, meditating on the nature of the numerals and segregating in his mind the odd ones from the even. He was seated at his diptych, or ancient two-leaved hinged writing table with inner sides waxed. His rough long-nailed fingers toyed with a snuff-box of perfect rotundity, and through a gap in his teeth he whistled a civil cavatina. He was a courtly man, and received honour by reasons of the generous treatment he gave his wife, one of the Corrigans of Carlo. We're now in the hall of Four Walker Terrace, and it is much as it was then. A few little changes here and there, but um, they're restoring it as it was. That room there, beside the stairs, which, which it, well, used to be my studio, and it used to be where Brian every Sunday wrote, call him in the Irish Times, Crucial Lawn, he wrote all those six pieces on Sunday afternoon in that room, in the room adjacent to the stairs. And what are your memories of Brian now of that time, of those Sunday afternoons? Can you remember, you remember them still very clearly? Oh, I do, of course, yeah. Well, I mean, you see, first of all, I was at school, and I used to do my Eckers, didn't that? And he had this typewriter, which was like a thundering machine. It was a big old, what do you call it, um, um, typewriter, um, um, Underwood typewriter. So he, he realised that the vibration of this was such that it, 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 it was very difficult for me to write, so he put a big green cover on the table, and then he put a typewriter on top of that, and that, of course, uh, did the job of smoothing, you know, the thing wasn't so bad. So, and then he used to come around sometimes and look at what I was at, and he'd, he'd say nothing, of course. The second opening. There was nothing unusual in the appearance of Mr. John Foreskey, but actually he had one distinction that is rarely encountered. He was born at the age of 25 and entered the world with a memory, but without a personal experience to account for it. His teeth were well formed but stained by tobacco, with two molars filled and a cavity threatened in the left canine. His knowledge of physics was moderate and extended to Boyle's Law and the parallelogram of forces. <laughs> 